Ways to control depth of field. Are you looking to control depth of field in your photos? Or maybe just understand what that means in the first place? Well, I'm gonna give you my biggest tips to add more depth and dimension to your photos. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I'm a professional photographer based in Silicon Valley, California. I've been doing it since 2010 and teaching since 2012. So I've had a pretty good run, photographed a lot of people, taught lots of things. And depth of field is one of my favorite creative elements. So firstly, what is depth of field? It's basically how much of an image is in focus when you take a picture. That's it. So your lens will focus the image onto the image sensor. And when you you know, look through the back of the camera or your your screen and you focus on something specifically, you're not actually focusing on the person or the tree or the car or whatever the subject is. You are focusing a distance away from the image sensor. That is what your camera is focusing on. The distance not the thing that is there. So the certain distance between that point and the camera, and the same distance beyond that is your area of focus. Meaning, if I photograph something 20 feet away, and I have a pretty wide open aperture, which I will explain what that means in a minute, then I'm gonna have a very shallow depth of field. So firstly, what is depth of field? So basically, how much of an image is in focus when you take a picture? Because your camera does not focus on a thing. It fo focuses on a distance from the image sensor. Even if you turn your lens or touch the screen to focus on an eyeball or a car or the flower, whatever, the camera doesn't know what the thing is. It's just saying, oh, that thing is this distance away. That's where I'm going to focus. Anything just beyond that or just in front of it will have a certain amount of focus as well. That is your depth of field, is how much of the scene is effectively in focus. So different ways that you can control that. You can either shrink it down, which is really popular in portraits or macro photography. So like just the eyes and face are in focus. Everything else in the background is out of focus. Or you can make a ton of things are in focus. Like you're doing landscape photos and you want the lake in the foreground and the mountains in the background to all be in focus. Cool. You can do that by controlling your depth of field. So there are four things that you can do to control your depth of field. Number one is the aperture. Number two is the focal length. Number three, the distance to your subject. And number four, controlling the foreground and background. So firstly, yeah, this episode, a little bit technical, but that's what you asked for. Depth of field is absolutely technical. I'm not going to do any math. I'm not going to give you formulas because honestly, you don't need them. Once you kind of get an idea for how this whole system works, then you can just play with it instinctually and you'll know what's going on. You can also find depth of field calculators online where you enter your camera, your focal length, your aperture value, the distance to the subject, and it will tell you exactly how wide or shallow your depth of field is. Also, I don't know why we use the terms wide and shallow when wide tends to measure width and shallow tends to measure depth. Why don't we use wide and narrow or, you know, deep and shallow? I don't know, but that's what we do, so bear with me. Okay, number one, for realsies this time, your aperture. Basically, the smaller your aperture value is, the more things will be in focus in your image. And the wider you open your aperture, the less will be in focus, the shallower your depth of field will be. So I do all of my photography at f1.8. That is way wide open. And I'm not gonna explain what those numbers mean. Doesn't matter for this video. Uh, I got photo basics video on this channel. You can check out if you want to learn more about that. So very, very wide open aperture. I focus on the eyeballs. Everything else is out of focus. Or I can focus on a bra strap or like some lace on the undies. Everything else goes out of focus. It adds a lot of mystery to the image. It also creates separation. It easily identifies that this is the thing I want you to focus on like as the viewer, the thing I want you to notice and nothing else is as important. It needs to be there, but it's not as important. That is what shallow depth of field can do for you. 
Uh, on the flip side, if you go to F-16, F-22, these aren't fighter planes. This is the aperture value, although I guess they are fighter planes. You have a very, very small opening, which means not very much light comes in. So that's something to consider as well. But having that really tiny aperture opening means everything in the frame will likely be in focus. And that is good if you want to get your landscape shots where the mountains in the background and the trees in the foreground, everything is in focus. So I suggest you take your camera, set it to aperture priority mode. This means you set the aperture, your camera will auto adjust everything else. And you're like, Mike, I shoot full auto. And that's cool. But if you're not as familiar with shooting on auto and controlling your exposure triangle, this is a great way to practice. And I want you to go and take pictures of things at F1.8, F2.8, F3.5, F8, F11, F16, and compare the depth of field. So take the same photo, different aperture values. You'll have to adjust your ISO and shutter speed so you can maintain your exposure. Uh, and just look at the finished images, see what your depth of field looks like. Because again, once you start to learn what, oh, this setting looks like this, this setting looks like that, you don't have to like do any math or type the numbers into the calculator. It will just you'll just know and you can take pictures with whatever depth of field you want. Number two is focal length. The shorter the focal length, the wider the depth of field will be. The longer the focal length, the shallower the depth of field will be. So if I leave my aperture at f2.8 and I'm using, let's say, a 17 millimeter lens and my aperture will be this wide, it may or may not be that wide, just giving you a comparison here. If I take that same 2.8 aperture, but I instead put it on a 200 millimeter lens, my depth of field is going to be a lot more shallow. Again, you don't need to understand the physics as to why all of this works, just trust me. And again, go out and play with it. If you've got a couple different lenses or one zoom lens, take pictures at different focal lengths with the same aperture value and see how your images compare. So again, the shorter the focal length, so you know, 10 millimeter, 17, 24, 35, these wide angle lenses will have a wider depth of field than telephoto lenses, like a 135 or a 200 millimeter lens. That is another way to control your depth of field, which is generally why when we do portrait photography, we use longer lenses, 85 millimeter, 135, or a 70 to 200 great for portraits because they give us that shallow depth of field, you know, more so than we could get with a wider angle lens. Of course, there's distortion. There's all kinds of things to consider there, but that's one of the main reasons. Number three, your distance from the subject. The closer the subject is to the camera, the shallower the depth of field will be. And the farther away somebody is, the wider the depth of field will be. Again, don't need to go into physics about why all this works the way that it does, just trust me. If you wanna get a shallow depth of field, get closer to your subject, which the focal length will effectively get you closer. But if you're like, all I have is a 50 millimeter lens, what do I do? You can get closer to your subject for a shallower depth of field. At the same aperture, same focal length, you can move your feet to control your depth of field also. Number four, this one's less scientific and more about controlling artistic elements. When Howard Hughes was doing a movie featuring airplanes flying around in the sky, the World War I fighter planes, it looked like it was being filmed in slow motion. And that was because after many, many days of shooting and being unhappy with the footage, he realized there was nothing to compare the speed of the planes to to make them look like they were going fast. He had to wait for a cloudy day, which means he spent an obscene amount of money, even at the time, renting all of these planes, all of the crews, everyone on standby every single day until they could shoot on a cloudy day. Because then you could see planes flying past clouds and it made them look faster than just in an open blue sky. You're like, that's cool, Mike, but I'm not photographing fighter planes. Take this lesson from Howard and apply it to your own photography. You can control the background and the foreground to add depth to your images. For example, if you're in a studio and you want to create a shallow depth of field, but there's nothing really in between you and the camera or the background behind the subject, you can still do a shallow depth of field and get the background out of focus, but 
You could also put elements between you and the subject. You know, maybe it's flowers. Maybe it's you're looking through branches. Add something closer to the camera that will look out of focus when you take the picture, and that will add depth to your image. I'm very minimalistic when it comes to doing my own photography, but I will put things in the background or things in the foreground. Sometimes I'm going to put a set of high heels on the ground, like in this photo and photograph them with a shallow depth of field, and my subject is completely out of focus in the background. One might argue that the subject is now the heels, but for me, it's still the person in the background, but it's one more way to add a little bit of mystery in boudoir photography. And you can do this with families, with landscapes, with products, with whatever. Put elements in front of the subject and behind them so that they fall out of focus when you shrink your depth of field, and that will add depth and dimension to your photos. So there you are, four ways to control your depth of field, adding depth and dimension to your photos. Number one is the aperture. Number two, the focal length of your lens. Number three, the distance to your subject. And number four, controlling the foreground and background so that there actually is depth to the image. I've got other great videos on this channel all about lighting and posing. And again, check out the Photography Basics video if you want to know more about the exposure triangle and some of the things I talked about in the early points of this video. I'll have that linked down below. And if you're like, that's cool, Mike. Got all the basics down. How do I just start taking cool photos and making money? Well, I'm glad you asked. Head to boudoirguild.com and check out the courses I have available there. Whether it's lighting, posing, business mastery, sales and pricing, marketing, or editing and workflow, I got you covered everything you could need to run a profitable photography business. And I'm going to give you a fifth bonus way to control your depth of field. Subscribe to my channel because I hear that subscribing to this channel will give you better control over your depth of field, whether it's shallow or wide. You are amazing. See you inside.